Well, the HD Nation, your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. I'm Patrick Norton. Hi, and I'm Robert Harris. Happy New Year. CES is coming. We're going to talk about what we expect to find in the gigantic halls of the Las Vegas Convention Center shortly. We pre-recorded this episode, so our apologies if some major HD news broke this week. Uh, you can always email us, acnation at revision3.com, or tweet at hdnation. We will do our best to answer your questions, even if we are just laying around trying to figure out why the children are screaming on New Year's morning. I hopefully will not have that problem. Oh, man, I could drive over to your house. You could experience it. <laughs> now I'm asking for it. Oh, my goodness. we got our first question of the new year. Merrick writes, Hi, Patrick. Robert, over the past few months, I spent the time mounting my HGTV above the fireplace. I created a floating box shelf that I mounted next to the mantle for my home theater AV receiver, my Xbox, my direct TV. I also took the time to snake all the wires behind the wall for the AV components as well as the speaker wires for the room. I am now looking for a good 5.1 satellite speaker system for under $500. It is not a large room and I am looking to maintain a discreet look with small speakers mounted on the wall along with the subwoofer. I came across the Energy Take 5.1 Classic speakers. Have you heard of Energy speakers and what is your recommendations on them or anything comparable? I do not want a soundbar system and I already have the home theater AV receiver. I am just looking for a great set of sounding speakers. Love the show, Merrick. Um, Merrick has read my situation at home perfectly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I bought the Take Energy Classics. That's what I'm using at home right now. You are a fan. I love them. They're actually a Klipsch company that makes the speakers. Mm -hmm. And the quality overall, the reason I went with these, one, the price, well under, well within your budget, under 400 bucks if you shop online. Two, the reviews are crazy. It's like CNET gave it, what, the editor's choice? Also, if you like that gloss finish, the subwoofer too on the, on the Take Energies. I, it, 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 I don't have mine cranked up a lot, but it fills in what the, what the satellite speakers can't quite deliver. Mm -hmm. But even the crossover point between what the satellites are doing and what the sub's doing, there's some good low-end range in the satellites itself. And, and for all of it, I'm doing everything from music to, of course, 5.1 and everything else. And yeah. I matched that with a good set of stands. I, I didn't want to mount or put anything on the wall, but they're ready to go for hanging or whatever you like. But uh, it, I, I couldn't be happier with the purchase. And I paired that with a decent AVR. Done. Yeah, I mean, for the money, 350 bucks. I mean, you know, Crutchfield, 499 ABT Electronics, 350 Amazon.com, $350. Uh, like Robert said, uh, an editor's choice from CNET. CNET also likes a set of speakers from Pioneer, the SP PK52FS. They're an Andrew Jones design speaker system. Um, you're going to pay like $550 for them if you buy them direct from Pioneer, but they'll basically send you everything in the list. Otherwise, as near as I can tell, you're going to have to like buy them piecemeal from Amazon, uh, which is actually probably more expensive because we're looking at like $250 uh, plus uh, $310, uh, $440, $540, almost exactly the same price buying them separately from from. Uh, from well, that's good uh, though, in case if you maybe just Amazon. need to fill in the missing points in right. your speaker setup. It's good to know that they're at least not going to overcharge you too much if you're buying yeah. separates like that. So. And just be careful, you know, speaker vendors are either really good about keeping speaker brands sort of untouched over years or they change them really fast. Find out that before you decide to buy like the stereo speakers, then the center channel, then the surround sounds because you want to have, you know, speakers that are designed to sound great together rather than having like two or three evolutions of speakers across your home theater system. But uh, when those Take Energy Classics first came out, they were immediately copied by the folks over at Monoprice. I won't say they did it on purpose. I don't think they were immediately copied. Pretty close. But anyway, uh, they got into a uh, tiff over that. And right. Monoprice stopped. But Monoprice went, came back with another version that people are now saying sounds at least as good, if not maybe better in some cases, if you let the speakers break in properly. So if, if you're looking for speakers in that price point, again, uh, the Monoprice kit also might be something to consider as well. And good news for anyone who likes good audio is that you have good options for, for standalone speakers uh, without, without breaking the bank. And if you think about what some soundbar systems cost, or even home theater in a box kits, which honestly, I'm kind of over the home, home theater in a box situation. Unless it's separate speakers in an AVR, if that's the home theater in a box kit, that's one thing, but most aren't, so. We should point out, I'm pretty sure you're not talking about the $73, 7645 speaker. Rob, $76.45 speaker system. No, I'm pretty sure you're I'll talking about the premium 5.1 home theater speaker that system. Could be it. Over. And, you know, look at those five star reviews by quite a few people there as well. I'd 14. Like to read through a few of them. So, 14 users. But there's some good options out there for under 500 bucks for sure. Yeah. 89% across 112 users on the $77 set. I would, I, I think if you go with the energies, you'll be super, super happy. I like them.
Hey, a couple weeks ago, we promised you a full review of Mediasonic's Homeworks over the air tuner and PVR, i.e., DVR, i.e., recording your home, well, recording video for like 50 bucks. People are using it to get broadcast television on their Xbox Ones and their HD TVs. How did it hold up to your scrutiny, Mr. Heron? Uh, surprisingly well for a $46 unit that features not only all the inputs and outputs you're gonna want, also USB storage for connecting your storage devices and for recording, which well, was really the big deal for me. Okay, so we've got a USB port for your thumb drives, your external hard drive on the front of it. Uh, RF pass through, so this would be your antenna RF pass through for or your if older you're using devices. It with a really old TV, okay. you can connect that way as well. HDMI, obviously, and then component and uh, wow, old school <laughs> composite. composite video, as well as a coaxial output if you're using an older uh, AV receiver or something like that that didn't have HDMI. So the box is simple. Uh, it's got a channel button on the front, which I like. If you've ever lost a remote, you'd probably like that too. Um, how's the video quality? Video quality is going to be as good as your reception. In this case, I found that the reception was excellent for this product. I was using simple antennas, and in this case, I, I had one of the best reception experiences I've ever had with an with a over-the-air receiver, period, be it built into the TV or not. Now, uh, also, the menu systems and everything incorporate basic setup when I was going through that. Uh, everything from just, you know, basic configuration, get your program, scan, what kind of resolution do you want. This will do 1080p upscaling, so it will take wow. your content coming in and do that. Stick with 1080i, though. That was one thing I found. It's just better to let the TV handle the deinterlacing and just leave it on 1080i, and you're generally going to have great picture quality out of it. But if you're receiving a 720p signal, you will get a 720p signal uh, delivered right to the TV. There is no native output mode, though. So if you're looking for that thing that says, oh, for specific programming, like uh, say one channel is in 720p, another's in 1080i, another's in 480p, you have native modes, like on many set-top boxes, that will just simply pass that signal through without converting it first to one format. Uh, this does not offer anything like that. You're going to be stuck with basically whatever one video format you want being spit out the back. But as such, like I said, the performance of the tuner, <laughs> fast and consistent. And we're indoors here, still picking up some signal yeah, I was on surprised. an antenna I have stuffed under the table right now. <laughs> and, and we should point out, this building is a Faraday cage, so to get any television signal is a big deal. This switches channels much faster than I would have expected. That was the other thing I really appreciated too, was the speed of the tuner in terms of changing channels. And so if you just push the middle button, it brings up the channel guide. And here's the channels I scanned for. Initially, here in the Bay Area, we're, we're blessed with a bunch of channels. Uh, I recorded, or I found over 50 stations. Uh, of course, you know, some are going to come in better than others. Some are a lot of foreign language channels and other things like that. Right. But it worked great. And the ability to then schedule and record programs that will save to the USB drive that I could just pull out, it really made for a, a surprisingly good experience. Now, the remote, I will say, is about as basic as it gets. It does, uh, the product does actually feature uh, Harmony remote database support. So if you have a Harmony remote, I would skip right to that and go there. Now, I really had this in mind, though, for cord cutters on a budget. Now, there is an over-the-air digital tuner built into every HDTV waiting for you to connect an antenna to it. And if your display doesn't have that built-in tuner, or you would like to say have the Xbox One's voice control driving your tuner, those local over and to get those local over-the-air stations, you're going to need a standalone tuner like this to make that connection. Now, MediaSonic's Homeworks WHW150 PVR, like I said, for 46 bucks online, I really couldn't go wrong. The storage and everything is simple to do. You can add mm -hmm. your own hard drive. You can use a flash drive like I was using. Uh, the setup is basic. The one complaint I will have about the whole thing really was that on the PVR recorded channels, this thing will also do time shifting, so you can pause TV and it'll sit there and pause oh, nice. it what, until you come back, that kind of thing. But when you record a, when you record a show, say it's in Dolby Digital 5.1, which most programming is nowadays, when you go to play that back on this unit, it actually won't play it back in 5.1. It'll switch it to stereo, but if you, but it's still stereo, or it's still 5.1 on the file itself, so one minor issue, and in this case also, you could take the optical out, or the coaxial out mm -hmm. in this case. That always had the 5.1 signal, so it was only with the recorded stuff that I had any kind of issue at all, and I have pinged the company about that to see if maybe, maybe they could add a firmware update, which gets gets the Dolby Digital track back into the HDMI output, but like I, I, I said, gotta say, you for, could work around. For 46 bucks, basic, like, you know, uh, DLNA style playback of simple audio files and video files and MPEG-4 and MPEG-2. It's a PVR. Um, that's pretty amazing, actually. And, and I also want to reiterate, 
we never get television reception inside of this building. So for this box to do it at 46 bucks, I know you probably saw some breaking up in the background. Do not blame this box. Blame this giant steel building we work in. That um, stacking stuff on top of the antenna we're using currently. That's but a bit of a challenge. A, a terrific <laughs> value, without a doubt. And the only thing else I could want with it, too, is maybe a second tuner. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a single tuner device, so you're only recording or watching one thing at a time. At 46 bucks, stack a second box up. Maybe. <laughs> you, you have a pass-through capability and more HDMI ports, so... Oh no problem goodness. there. But like I said, it was just that one thing about the recorded files. If I pull the drive out and put it in my computer and play it, I had suddenly have Dolby Digital 5.1 on any other player. It was just this player built into this thing with HDMI out only. That's pretty impressive. One minor gotcha, but something that can be worked around. <laughs> AC Nation and Texil are going to be all over CES 2014 next week. Are you wondering what you can expect? Big shock. Uh, the first 60 hertz uh, Ultra HD slash 4K HDTV announcements are going to be all over the place unless something goes very, very wrong. I think we're going to hear less about 3D this year, except... Uh, for passive 3D. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. 4K televisions, the one thing that uh, jumps out at me, and I'm hoping to see a lot more of this at CES this year, is better passive 3D. It, it, passive 3D on a 1080p screen is fine, it looks okay, but you are losing half the resolution. Effectively, you're spilling, splitting that 1080p picture into two frames for each eye. With the 4K screens, you get full resolution support with your Blu-ray 3D movies. More OLED, definitely. We're gonna see a lot more OLED goodness at the show. Organic light emitting mm -hmm. diodes. Uh, without a doubt, we'll probably see more screen sizes instead of the 55-inch models we're currently stuffed with, and maybe a model that doesn't have a curved screen too, which would be pretty cool. <laughs> now, projection. I'm really hoping someone besides Sony is going to offer 4K, true 4K projection at prices that mere mortals like us can afford. I want to see someone like Epson, Optoma, uh, Panasonic, and others unveil new 4K consumer pro projection tech at the show. That would really be one of my one of my highlights if I could. And I'm also curious to see if Samsung will bring that multi-view glasses technology for some of its premium LCD and plasma televisions, mm -hmm. or if that display sharing technology is really locked down to the new OLED displays because of speed-related issues or quality. That's just something I saw. Something else you could do with 3D technology that wasn't 3D in terms of providing right. separate views for two different viewers in addition to, in Samsung's case, you since have we're building separate it, audio. Since we're building it into the HDTV, even if there's no decent 3D content, let's figure out something to do with that technology. Um, 4K content announcements, we would expect, finally, something broader than Sony saying you can have a Sony box that works with Sony TVs. I'd expect a host of PlayStation 4 and Xbox One accessories and, of course, new AV receivers and speakers from the usual sources. Uh, keep an eye on HD Nation for all the HD news from CES and techzilla.com for all our CES 2013 coverage, which is going to be phones, tablets. We expect NVIDIA to have new and exciting announcements. Who knows what NVIDIA will follow the shield up with, uh, but we wait with bated breath. And that's it for this episode of HD Nation. Please subscribe at revision3.com slash HD Nation or youtube.com slash HD Nation. That's right. Hey, and please email HDNation yeah. at revision3.com with your comments, questions, or suggestions, or fire them out to at HD Nation on Twitter or post them right down below. And do us a favor, share us. If you like us, send your favorite links, your favorite videos to your friends, uh, HD Nation, revision3.com slash HD Nation or the YouTube channel. Just, just fire that out and let people know what you're watching. Hey, and until next time, thank you so much for watching.